Welcome back to Euro Football Daily for Euro Transfer Talk. With the Champions League final now in the rearview mirror, we're bracing ourselves for silly season. Here's what we've seen and heard over the last seven days. We start in Italy, where Cristiano Ronaldo's future looks increasingly uncertain. With Juve barely qualifying for next season's Champions League, returning manager Max Allegri is said to be keen to get the 36-year-old's wages off the books. The problem here is of course that CR7 is amongst the highest paid players in world football. His salary is said to set the Turin club back around 80 million euros every single year. Recently, there's been some sensational stories about the five-time Ballon d'Or winner returning to sporting in his homeland. However, the most likely destination for Ronaldo appears to be Manchester United. Reportedly still in regular contact with United boss and former teammate Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, it's been rumoured the Premier League runners-up don't mind the wages as long as he's available for a cut price fee. And with the former Real Madrid man's contract expiring next summer, this window represents the last opportunity for Juve to get any return on their 120 million euro investment. Especially with victory in next season's Champions League, the reason Ronaldo was bought in looking increasingly more unlikely. And if United are keen on bringing Cristiano Ronaldo back to Old Trafford, there's the possibility that Juve may also try and bring back a former player, using their current man as swap bait. Paul Pogba was a favourite of Max Allegri's between 2014 and 2016, appearing 90 times, scoring 20 goals, winning two league and cup doubles, as well as reaching the 2015 Champions League final. Pogba's contract expires at the end of next season too, and as yet, there hasn't been any movement from either side to extend his future with Manchester United despite once again becoming a key member of the side following a number of persistent injuries and rumours that he was unhappy at the club. No doubt Ronaldo will be keen for one more big move in his storied career, with the Portuguese player needing just one more Champions League trophy to equal the record for most wins by a single player in the competition. Realistically, is his former club the best place to achieve that ambition? We're not so sure. Regardless, United could well be forced to decide between sentimentality and building for the future in the coming months. Keep your eye on this story. It's no secret that Jadon Sancho is Manchester United's dream signing this summer, 12 months on from the initial rumours that basically had a deal between Borussia Dortmund and Solskjaer's side all but done. Ultimately, the two sides couldn't reach an agreement. Or rather, United refused to meet the £105 million asking price BVB were demanding. This time round though, a deal looks far more likely, despite the Englishman's output dropping from the previous two campaigns. Owing to the financial ramifications of the pandemic, the 21-year-old has seen his asking price drop dramatically, with even a starring role for the three lines of the Euros this summer, unlikely to see his asking price rise beyond £80 million. All good news for Manchester United then, who once more have reportedly agreed on personal terms with the former Manchester City Academy product with all parties expecting the transfer to be completed sooner rather than later, even though German outlet Sport1 are saying the Old Trafford club are yet to lodge a formal transfer bid. While exact figures remain unclear, it was reported that United offered Sancho weekly wages of 200k last summer, immediately putting him amongst the highest earners in the Premier League. But we want to hear from you at home. How do you see Manchester United lining up next season if they finally get this deal over the line? Let us know in the comments below. Before we move on, if you're not a member of Team FD, then hit that subscribe button right now and turn notifications on. Remember to get at us in the comments too and we'll reply in the first hour. To North London next, where Tottenham Hotspur have been seeking a replacement for Jose Mourinho since sacking him in April. 29-year-old former player Ryan Mason won four of his seven games as interim boss, but it was always clear that Daniel Levy would be looking for someone more experienced to take the reins at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. The surprise name to be linked with the role over the weekend was Maurizio Pochettino, who of course left the role early in the 2019-20 season, just months after leading Spurs to a Champions League final. In total, the Argentine won 159 of 293 matches with the club, and naturally remains a fan favourite. Despite winning his first two trophies at new club PSG, Poch missed out on the Liga and title to Lille, with goal claiming that the Argentine already wants out, with a year remaining on his contract at the Parc de France. Allegedly, some of this owes to a frosty relationship with director of football Leonardo. As such, the former Spurs man has also been linked with the recently vacated Real Madrid role, after Zinedine Zidane resigned again. Obviously, Real are a far more enticing prospect than Spurs, but it appears that Levy and co have shifted their search elsewhere. Antonio Conte guided into Milan to Scudetto glory last month, but has left the Nerazzori already after expressing his concerns about the club's financial situation heading into the next campaign. 
as it emerged the club may have to sell star players to balance the books. Now back on the market, it appears the Italian has emerged as Levy's preferred candidate, with the Spurs chairman willing to offer him £17 million a season to take charge, some 50% more than his salary at the San Siro. If this does happen, Conte would become the fourth person to manage both Chelsea and Spurs, following in the footsteps of Glenn Hoddle, Andre Villas-Boas and of course Jose Mourinho. But that's not where the story stops. The Daily Express are also reporting that Fabio Paratici is being headhunted by Spurs as their new sporting director, after the Italian left the same role at Juve last week. Conte and Paratici worked together whilst in Turin between 2011 and 2014, at the start of the old lady's modern dynasty, with the 48-year-old the mastermind behind most of Juve's big moves over the last decade. Spurs fans, we want to know who you'd prefer, Conte or Poch? As ever, let us know down below. One of the biggest transfer sagas this summer will surely involve Harry Kane, with the England striker asking to leave Spurs following another trophyless campaign in North London. The 27-year-old has expressed a desire to remain in the Premier League. As such, Manchester City are currently the favourites for his signature, but with Levy apparently holding out for at least £120 million for the three Lions captain, Pep Guardiola's side may have to get creative in order to bring him to the Etihad. And that's where Gabriel Jesus comes in. Spurs have rarely had an adequate backup for their 221-goal striker, and it's safe to say that there's no one at the club capable of stepping into the breach. To avoid a summer-long search for a point man, Spurs could make a push to include Gabby Jesus in any deal that sees Kane head to Manchester. Currently valued at £70 million by City, the Premier League champions would likely have to stump up a similar amount in cash as well. However, with the departure of Sergio Aguero this summer, it now leaves Jesus as Pep's only recognised senior centre-forward. Still, he's never nailed down a starting berth and only scored 14 goals in all competitions last term, the Brazilian's worst campaign since his arrival from Brazil in 2017. All these moving parts show that any potential deal is still some way off. Plus, if Pochettino returns to Spurs this summer, could he tempt Kane into staying for one more season? Do you guys at home think Harry Kane is going to leave? Or a signing that long-term deal priced him out of any move? Either way, if Spurs do get the aforementioned fee for their star asset, let's hope they reinvest it better than they did with the Gareth Bale money. Now for a brief update on Erling Braut Haaland. The Norwegian international is football's most sought-after player, attracting attention from pretty much every top club in all of the continent's major leagues. The 20-year-old's tally since the start of the 1920 season stands at 85 goals in 81 matches, with 57 of those coming in the last 18 months for Borussia Dortmund. And with the reported €75 million Euro release clause remaining inactive until the summer of 2022, it would seem that clubs are willing to pay over the odds to get him through the doors a year early, with his agent Mino Raiola spotted doing the rounds at clubs like Manchester City, PSG and Real Madrid. Bert Dortmund's stance on Haaland not being for sale is well known, and it appears the prodigy isn't going to force a move this window. Speaking to Scandinavian broadcaster via play, Haaland said, Will I stay with Dortmund? I have a contract for a couple of years, so I'm respectful towards it. And who could blame him? After a stellar campaign that saw BVB lift the DFB Pokal and snare one of Europe's most promising managers in Marco Rosa. Saying that, we're prepared for this transfer saga to rumble on all summer. We end this week's episode with some news coming out of South America, where the Copper America is due to kick off in little under two weeks. Or at least it was meant to. Featuring some of the world's biggest stars, the tournament was to be co hosted by Argentina and Colombia before Colombia was stripped of the honour last month following weeks of political protests. And sensationally on Sunday, Argentina were also relieved of staging the event after seeing a surge in the number of coronavirus cases in the country, leaving Conmebol, South American football's governing body, scrambling to find a host. Despite the USA offering to host the tournament five years after putting on the Centenario edition, critics have been quick to point out Conmebol's hypocrisy, with Brazil also struggling to deal with the COVID pandemic. Here's to hoping that a safe way can be found to put on this festival of football. So team, that's Euro transfer talk for another week. But did we miss any red hot rumours? Let me know in the comments below. Click on screen now to check out another great Euro football daily video. Like this video, subscribe with notifications on and we'll catch you next week.